Yes. Okay, you guys enjoy watching my taste tests and reaction videos to various famous YouTubers recipe videos. So, I'm not gonna disappoint you on this one. This is gonna be a reaction video and a taste test of Brian Lagerstrom's 30 minute gyros. Let's go right into it. Hey, what's up? I love a gyro sandwich, but so like I. you, I don't own a spit to make one. So I've invented a process here to make a gyro. Hmm. I'm curious about this new technique. At home that hits just like the restaurant version, but it's lighter, it's fresher, and it only takes about 30 minutes to make. This is week night. To get started, I'll grab my food processor and into that I'll measure 100 grams of rough chopped onion. That's about half of a medium sized onion and I chopped it up before I'm going to chop it up with the food processor so that it breaks down quicker. And Why? Evenly. Then in goes three to four cloves of garlic. The lid goes on and I'll spin both of those up together until they're relatively well. Uh, so he's and going for doing a paste. One pound or 450 grams of 90-10 ground beef. Feel free to use fattier beef if you want things to be slightly juicier. Just be prepared to manage some flare ups on the grill. Behind the beef, I'll add in one pound or 450 grams of ground lamb. Again with the lamb. Well, I finally have an explanation. The reason behind the choice of eating lamb by the Greek diaspora communities is multifactorial. So, I did some research and I found out that the diaspora Greek communities are most likely still eating lamb because of a sociological concept called a cultural lag or diaspora lag. Sociologist William Ogburn defines cultural lag as a cultural lag occurs when one of two parts of culture which are correlated changes before or in greater degree than the other part does. One of the reasons why Greek Americans, Greek Australians and so on chose lamb is because most of them emigrated to those countries when lamb was still the preferred meat of choice, mostly the 1920s and 30s and some in the post-war period. These communities being isolated from Greece, it means that they did not experience the shift in meat eating that happened in Greece during the military junta in the 1970s. There are still places nowadays, I believe, where they still prefer eating lamb. One of my viewers argued that he has only seen lamb gyro when he was visiting Crete, but that is just anecdotal evidence. Another reason behind the choice of lamb gyros instead of pork gyros by the Greek diaspora is in the fact that these communities lived in multicultural cities and they had to consider their entire clientele and their aversion to pork. By serving lamb, they could cast a wider net and therefore sell their product to more people. The third reason is kind of related with the second one and it's the perception of lamb as one of the other meats or exotic meats in other countries. This elevates the status of gyros as something, you know, Mediterranean, Middle Eastern, foreign, and therefore exotic. This is especially true in the US where beef and chicken are the default meats of choice. These are the main reasons that I could find to explain this big difference in choice of meat between Greeks in Greece and diasporan Greeks. Now let's go back to the video. And the fat balance on this lamb is roughly 85-15. And I'll mention that you can use all lamb instead of half beef if you prefer, but I think the beef helps mellow out some of the gamey lamb flavor. And beef is like half the price of lamb where I live. So it's more frugal this way. On top of the meat, I'll add in 50 grams of panko breadcrumbs, two grams of dried oregano, five grams of coriander, three grams of black pepper, one to two grams of chili flake, seven grams are you making meatballs? ...of ground cumin and 10 grams of salt. Now the lid goes on and I'll spin this up to combine. The idea here is to approximate the giant cone of gyro meat that you see at most Americanized Greek restaurants. That stuff is very finely minced and bordering on pureed, so I'm gonna try and do the same. Think of it like a Greek meatball on a stick or like a Middle Eastern kofta that is flavored like a gyro. Once the spices are well incorporated and the meat is well broken down, I'll stop to take a look. As you can see, this is pretty well homogenized at this point and texturally, it's quite sticky. That stickiness is gonna allow us to shape this into something that's easy to grill and easier to slice. Next, I'm gonna grab my scale. And One thing that I really love about Brian is 
his exact measurements and in grams. Quickly divide this into six 175 gram balls of meat. Now to shape these into grillable patties, I'm gonna grab a ball and work it a little bit in my hands to make sure the exterior is just a little bit stickier on the outside. And then I'll press it and pull it into an oblong shape that's about 67 inches tall by three inches wide, give or take. And once it's looking kind of like an ice cream sandwich like this, I'll grab a wooden skewer and stick it right through the middle of the patty, but off to the side like this. By the way, these skewers have- Honestly, if this is going to the grill, I don't understand the point of using the wooden skewers at all. It, they don't contribute anything. You can just put these patties on the grill and then slice them. Foodies, can you please do me a favor? Please subscribe. It will help out this channel a lot. Thank you. I've been soaking in water overnight because that really helps them from burning into ashes when we throw these on the grill. Now I'll take a second skewer and stick it right through the middle, but on the other side of the meat patty, top to bottom. Then I'll give it just a little bit more zhuzhing to adjust and tidy things up. And there we go, Euro meat on a stick. I'll move this over to a sheet tray and I'll mention that the sticks here really help keep the meat in place and allow me to move these around on the grill a lot more easily if I need to. <laughs> I don't know what you are thinking, but I can't follow the recipe exactly to the letter, but my little meat loaves look quite similar sans the wooden skewers. What do you guys think? Speaking of the grill, I'll scoot these meats off to the side and head outside to the grill. By the way, don't turn your burners on high blast and then spend three minutes adjusting your camera before you hit ignite. You can make your phone or camera overheat quite quickly. <laughs> well, in a similar fashion, I preheated my grill too. As far as heat goes here, I've got all three of these burners turned up to high because I'm gonna be looking for a hard, fast sear on this meat. I'll give the grill 15 minutes or so to preheat, and in the meantime, I'm gonna make the toppings for this sandwich, starting with a quick, easy Israeli-style cucumber tomato salad. No. A gyros needs tomato, onion, and french fries. And of course, tzatziki, but no, you don't need all this. No, no, no. That's definitely not the most traditional move for a Euro, I know, but it combines the cucumber and tomato vibe of the trad Euro with something more vibrant and flavorful. Think of it like a Greek style pico de gallo. First up, I'll need to medium dice some cucumbers. This is just a regular old slicing cucumber that I've peeled. Not only you chose to use cucumber, but you are using this watery style that you find anywhere else other than Greece and Cyprus. Come on, use a village cucumber of the Horafi. Build some, but not all of the skin off of, and then I cut it into long strips. Turn those 90 degrees, and then I'll dice those into this medium small dice. By the way, I remove most of the squishy seed stuff because that's gonna sog up the salad. I know, I'm sorry for giving you grief about this because even I couldn't find field cucumbers and I had to buy greenhouse ones, which are quite sad. One medium cucumber should yield about 150 grams, and once it's diced, I'll scoot it into a medium bowl and then grab a medium-sized tomato. This is an heirloom variety that I got at the farmer's market, but- That is a gorgeous tomato. I wish we had more varieties of tomatoes here in Cyprus. But a regular old slicing tomato from the grocery store would work totally fine. Just try to avoid something that's mealy and white on the inside. I'll slice the tomato and then cut those slices into strips, turn 90 degrees, and then I'll dice those strips into the same size medium dice as I did for the cucumber. This medium sized tomato should yield about 150 grams as well and into the bowl it goes. I used my tried and tested small plump tomatoes that are always nice Juicy and sweet. Next, I'll grab a half of a red onion and cut that longitudinally, then latitudinally, and then I'll give it an even dice the same size as the cukes and the tomatoes. Also, how you can appreciate that Brian has chef's training because he explains exactly how to cut that onion, which I kid you not, I am learning a lot from and I am using now. Into the bowl it goes, and then I'll grab a strong grip of parsley without the stems. I'll give that a rustico chop. In total, I need about 15 grams of parsley into the bowl it goes. On top of that, I'll squeeze in half of a lemon. That's about 15 grams worth of juice. Then a good long squeezer of olive oil. Let's say 15 to 20 grams. Then a healthy grip of salt. And don't be shy on that. I didn't use as much parsley in my salad as you do because I hate so many leaf ingredients in my salads. But I followed the rest of the steps to the letter. 
I'll jump into the bowl with the spoon now and stir everything to combine. As this salad sits, that salt's gonna draw out some moisture and the veggies are gonna marinate in all of those juices and the whole thing's gonna get more flavorsome. Up next, I'll make some lemon herb yogurt sauce to loop things up. To a high sided container, I'm gonna measure 200 grams of plain full fat yogurt, so so 75 good. grams of mayonnaise, the added. <laughs> Come on, Brian. Mayonnaise. Ethan's on Ziggy. Come on. Like, this really irritates me. I respect the out of you, I'm not gonna lie. And I've made your recipes before, especially the beef stroganoff, and it was excellent. But at some point, you need to draw a line on what is traditional and what is heresy. And including mayonnaise in tzatziki, it's just a no-no. Come on. It's like pineapple on pizza. You just don't do it. That from that mayo is really going to help cut some of the bracing acidity here and bring some balance. Then 15 to 20 grams of lemon juice or about a half a lemon's worth, one minced garlic clove and two grams of salt. Now my immersion blender goes in and I'll spin all of this up to combine. You could skip the blender here if you wanted, but your sauce is going to be a touch thicker than I'd like it to be. The blender really helps break up the thickness of that yogurt. But isn't it the point of the tzatziki to be thick? and to provide like a textural difference. I trust Brian's culinary instincts too much and therefore I made his tzatziki inspired dip and used the mayonnaise. And if you want to find out what I thought about it, watch until the end of this video. Overall gives the sauce a nice thin texture that I think is ideal. Once that's spun up, I'm gonna add in two to three grams of chopped dill, fresh dill. Yeah. I'll stir that in and there we go. A sour, tart, round, herby dressing to bring some life to a fresh grilled meat sandwich. The pro move from here is to move this into a little squeezer so that you can have a high level of accuracy and control over where your sauce hits things. this gyro. Once I've got my sauce in cucumber salad made, now it's time to grill these meats. I let this grill preheat for about 15 minutes and at this point it's rolling hot at about 450 to 500F. Before I drop any food on this though, I need to give these grates a generous dose of high smoke point oil. The heat here is gonna make that oil bond to the cast iron grates and that's gonna form a temporary polymer that keeps food Tina. from sticking. One last move here is to hit the meat itself with a small dose of pan spray. This you have the world's best lubricant olive oil and you are using the spray on thing and you are a chef like i understand some things need to be fast but like you could put uh, some really good quality olive oil in a little pot and with your brush go over them i just again love you brian love you and your content is muy bien but nah that's not my thing added layer of fat can help transfer heat to the meat and provide a superior sear. Okay, once the grill is oiled and very, very hot, I'm gonna lay on my skewers of meat. I'll make sure to give each piece a really good press into the grates to ensure even contact and heat transfer. And once everyone's in the pool, I'm gonna let these sit and sear undisturbed for four to five minutes. Four to five minutes later, when I check back, you can see that these have taken on some really nice dark color. So from here, I'll flip them over and cook them on the far side. Here I was too impatient and I flipped the patties too quickly and therefore I didn't have as good of a char as Brian does, but I did get a really good char on the underside. By the way, this is my attempt at recreating the high dry heat of a spit. The best euros are always shaved off of a spit and this is about as close as you can get at home flavor wise. If you didn't want to use a grill or if you didn't have one, you certainly could do this under the broiler, but it See, I told you, like, why did you need the skewers in the first place? You didn't need them at all. They provide nothing. Take some adjusting to time and temperature to make sure you don't dry out the meat. Now, once everything's flipped over, I'm gonna lower this lid and grill on side two for three to four more minutes. After eight to 10 minutes of grilling in total, I'll come back and take a look. All six of my meat clods are perfectly grilled and they smell fricking dope. Internal temp wise, I'm shooting for 150F. I personally wouldn't go much higher than 155 because you could start to dry out the meat. These are in the zone, so I'm gonna lift them off the grill and bring them inside to turn them into a Euro sandwich. Back in the house, once the meat has rested for about five minutes or so, I'm gonna carefully remove these charred skewers. Look, this really looks delicious. I am genuinely salivating. So I know that like I'm a bit nitpicky on the technique, but I'm pretty sure that Brian really knocked it out of the park 
and you know you're gonna see my reaction soon anyway next i'll grab my chef's knife and slice this euro flavored meatball into a thickness that approximates what you would get at a euro place visually this doesn't look like much i'll admit that but neither does euro meat Texturally, though, this is great. It's moist, it's meaty, it's tender, and it tastes mildly of spiced lamb, like it should. The last step here is to cut those slices in half so that we can get something that more easily fits onto the sandwich. Or, let's be more accurate, the taco. Yes, I prefer to use flour tortillas to make weeknight gyro. Now I'm going to fill that tortilla with three ounces of the chopped, sliced, grilled gyro meat. Meat first. Why? It's going to be so sloppy and you don't get them bread goo come on then i'm gonna hit the whole thing with a generous drizz of my yogurt lemon dill sauce then a few pinches of salty crumbly greek style feta cheese the salty sheepiness here really lights this thing up behind the feta i'll lay down a bunch of sliced pepperoncini doggies at least six to eight of the pepperoncinis for the heat again Make sure to drain off any excessive moistness or regret it when your taco is dripping down your arm. Lastly, I'll add in a pinch of shredded lettuce. Lettuce! Re! Brian, please. Yes, that's a euro, or at least it's very, very close. It has all of the flavors and textures that you'd need in the same place, but you don't need to own a spit to make it happen. As you can see, I also assembled my gyros but I omitted the pepperoncinis because I couldn't find them. And obviously I omitted the lettuce that doesn't belong on anything Greek. Bye bye lettuce. Let's eat this thing. Is the anticipation worth it, Brian? <sighs> Cheers. You know what, Brian? You were right about this salad. I was skeptical at first. But yeah, it's actually really good. Hmm. I don't think it's gyros. But you know something? It's worthwhile. You should try it. Overall, I think Brian nailed it. I made half the portion of meat with half the ratio of filling and spices and I managed to make four pizzas with it. This time my family and I agreed that the giri were overall very good. Actually, the average was an 8 out of 10. So if you're gonna choose to make a gyros at home, probably make Brian's rather than Adam Ragusia's, which was a hit and a miss. I know what I said earlier in my reactions about tzatziki containing mayonnaise. But consider me now a heretic because that tzatziki inspired dip, it was the bee's knees, especially with the QP mayo. I will definitely be making that again, but I'm not gonna call it tzatziki. Brian, you really know your way around the kitchen, don't you? I will definitely make this recipe again, but next time I am not blending the meat in the mixer because you are making too many things dirty. Next time, I will actually use another technique that I also learned from Brian, where you put your meat in a sheet tray under the broiler for maximum caramelization. And I will actually knead all the meats together in a bowl with my hands. I know this will take longer, but at least I won't be dirtying so many things. All in all, Brian's gyros, at least to my taste, was excellent. What do you guys think? Does Brian Giros look appetizing? Would you make it? Let me know down in the comments. If you found this video amusing, might I interest you in watching my other taste test slash reaction video to Adam Ragusia Sloppy Giros or the modern history of Suvlagi? Until the next time. Bye!